In this section of the video we will go over the calibration of the dual extruder. What that consists of is to calibrate the height between the two nozzles and also the relative distance between the two nozzles. So how we'll do that is we'll do test print and then we'll see how far it's, it's off and we'll correct the, the values. So firstly we will need to load the profile for the dual extruder and how we will do that is we'll go to the slicer tab in Repetier Host. We will go to configuration and we will import the printer profile. The printer profile for the dual extruder is called Prusa Dual with auto bed leveling. You can download this file, it's a, it's a RP, uh, RCP file. You can download it from the mega upload folder. So we will open it and then it will have the settings for the dual extruder and then we will save it to make sure it's saved on this uh, on this PC. And if you don't have the profiles for the different filaments, you can also find it in the same location on the mega upload folder and then you can also import the settings for the AVS and the PLA and so on. Now we will add the test print to Reptiost. So we'll close the slicer window. We will go to object placement and we will add the test block STL file. The test block STL file is also available on the, the mega upload folder. It is basically just a small cube. So we're going to copy it so that we have two of them. And you can position them anywhere in the bed. For this I'm just going to put it in the center of the bed. Now what I'm going to do is here on the right hand side we can select with what extruder, with which extruder we need to um, print which model. So for the first one I'm going to select one. So I'm going to print the first test block with extruder one and the second one with extruder two. And you'll see that the color changed because in the printer settings I've configured uh, extruder 2 with a different uh, visualization color. Now if we go to the slicer tab, at the top here we have, we're going to use the Cura slicer. The printer configuration will be the one that we've just loaded, Prusa Dual with auto bed leveling. The adhesion type of none. The quality, I'll keep it at 0.25 mm layer thickness. The support type, I'll leave it at none. The speed, I have it more or less in the middle. I have the slider more or less in the middle. Infill density is at 50%. I've enabled cooling because for this uh, test, I'm going to use PLA. You can also use ABS. Now this one changed, let's just change it back. Okay, and now at the bottom here you'll see that there's extruder 1 and extruder 2. And now we're going to select which filament are we going to print with which extruder. You can, later on you can do different um, filaments in the, in the different extruders, but for this calibration test we're going to use the same. So we're going to select both of them as PLA in, in this case. Okay, we're going to slice with Kira Engine. And there you can see there's two, there's the two blocks. And they are different colors because they are printed with the different nozzles or the different extruders. And then there's an extra block that was created. That's the prime and wipe tower. So before it starts to use a specific nozzle, it first goes to the prime tower, it primes the nozzle and then it starts with the, with the print. Okay, so the next step will be to load the filament and connect to the printer and then we can do the, the test print. What's important is to use two different colors because we want to see how these two align. Okay, so here I've put the two filaments into the extruders, I've pushed, it, pushed them down into the hot ends. You can see that I'm using a gold and a transparent green so that we can distinguish the two, 
the two colors and I'm gonna heat it up the, the hot ends um, you'll see that the menu is slightly different now for instance if I go to preheat PLA you'll see that there's preheat PLA 1, preheat PLA 2, preheat PLA all and preheat PLA bed so if I go preheat PLA all it will heat up both hot ends and the, the bed now the hot ends have reached the temperature and I've pushed the filament in a little bit so that it starts to come out the bottom and now we can start the, the print ok so now my print has started and the first thing that I noticed is during the first layer the gear on the left hand side was the, the motor was jumping so that means that it cannot feed the, the filament um, properly down the reason for that is because the nozzle is against the glass and the filament cannot go out at the, the bottom and I saw that it was not so on the, the gear on the right hand side or the extruder on the right hand side so that means that the um, extruder on the left hand side is a bit lower than the one on the right hand side so what we want to do is we want to get the height between the auto uh, bed leveling um, measurement or sensor and the relative height between the two nozzles we want to get that to be to be correct so what I would do first is I would make the the distance that the printing head goes down after the the auto bed leveling I would reduce that a little bit by about 0.5 millimeters because it seems like we need to reduce it quite a lot and then I would also uh, make the end stop for the extrude on the left hand side I would pull it a bit up so that it doesn't go down as far okay for the sake of time I've stopped the the print and let's quickly have a have a look at it so firstly I can see that the the green uh, is printing lower than the the gold so we need to pull the the extrude on the left hand side we need to to make the end stop a bit higher I would say um, I would turn it one full turn so that it it bottoms out higher and then the gold was printed first so the distance between the nozzles and the the auto bed leveling um, we can make that distance smaller so that it doesn't go so far after the auto bed leveling because it was a bit close to the, the bed and then the third thing is the distance the relative distance between the two nozzles we have a look at the prime tower to see how that um, how that is what we want is that both colors should be directly on top of each other but here we can see that the green is about a millimeter and a half to the right hand side and about one millimeter to the back so we can can update those values to to correct that firstly we're going to adjust the left extruder and we want it to bottom out higher so how we do that is with sharp nose pliers we hold on to the um, the M4 lock nut there at the bottom and we're going to turn this screw one full turn in so that it bottoms out um, higher and we're going to leave the one on the right hand side we're going to leave as is okay how we make the other adjustments is in Repetia Host we go to the slicer we go to configuration if we go to the print tab and the g-code tab then this is the g-code that the, the printer um, adds to the beginning of the print so some of the calibration values are defined in these um, in the script it's if it's not showing you'll see that you need to be on the the star g code there on the left hand side um, which has the calibration values okay so the changes we that we are going to make here is you'll see in the third line from the top there's a command m218 
and then it says T1 so what that means is it overrides the the offset between the two extruders um, and now it's defining a new value for T1 which is the second extruder and then there's uh, X and then a value and then Y and then a value at the moment it's set at 39 so we want to move it um, or that's the current distance between the, the two extruders we want to make that less because it's moving too far to the, the right and we said we're going to make it 1.5 millimeters less so I'm going to change that from um, 39 to 37.5 and then also one millimeter to the from the back forward so that means that the second extruder is too much to the back so I think this is correct I think it should be positive one and then the other change is a little bit down you'll see there's a line that's commented out that says set the Z distance between the probe and the nozzle and then there's M851 and then Z at the moment it's set at <coughs> minus 6 so let's make that minus 5.5 so that's basically how far the printing head will go down after the auto bed leveling so now we can save it and we can clean the bed and run the print again and see what's the result remember to re-slice your model you can move the, the objects if you want to print it at a different point at the, of, the, of the bed but it's not necessary but remember to, to re-slice the model so that the new settings are taken into account if you move the, mo the, the models you can easily see if the new um, or if the print has been re-sliced ok this is our next print that I stopped a little bit into the print now we can firstly see that the green one has been shifted in that direction and the alignment seems seems quite good the shift that we made in that direction I think it was in the wrong direction so I think we should make that a minus one and not a positive one then the the green one is still a bit lower than the than the gold one so we need to lift the the left extruder a little bit more or we can also drop the the right one if we want to and then the total height of the print is still a bit low we can also lift the whole uh, or make the distance between the the bed leveling probe and the nozzles a bit a bit less so now we continue with this process till we um, get the alignment in terms of the height and the the x and y direction we we get that spot on now that the calibration print is finished we can check the, the results so the first thing to check is to have a look at the skirt if the first the height of the first layer is is correct so if your that's the distance between your your servo your z probe and your nozzles and if it's too close the filament most probably won't won't come out if it's too high it will um, sit like a sausage on the the glass and when it's just right it should be squashed a little bit onto the the glass for the the first layer the second thing that we will check is we'll take the the two blocks so we take the two blocks and we measure the height of the two blocks and we can see this one is 19.6 just get the top and the bottom and that one is 19.54 so that's very very close to each other so the this tells us that the height between the two nozzles are correct and then the last thing that we can have a look at is the prime tower so if we take the prime tower and we have a look at the different sides you can see that two of the sides are more green and two of the sides are more gold 
So this gives you an indication of how accurate is the positioning between the, the, the two nozzles. This is pretty accurate because I can see gold and green on all the, the sides. But um, if you want to, you can, you can fine tune it even further. Um, but this is very, very close. I would change it by about this, this side I change by about 0.1 and that side by about 0.3 millimeters to get it to get it correct. So yeah, that's the calibration of the dual extruder. To show you, show you some examples of what you can do with a dual extruder, yes for instance uh, like, a, like a traffic cone which has been printed in two colors. We've also coated this with XTC 3D to give it the, the glossy finish afterwards. Here we have two globes. The one with the transparent green looks actually quite, quite nice. And you can see the amount of detail and definition that you get was, was very good. And then this is just an interesting test that we've done. The black is um, ABS and the red is flexible filament. So if you take the component, you can basically, when it comes off the printer, it is basically a joint that you can, can use in a robot or um, something. Something I want to, to mention is if you have the dual extruder and you're only going to print with one extruder, you'll see that we've created a, a filament called NUN. So the purpose of that is it just set the, the temperature of the, the hot end at 40 degrees Celsius and then it will only use the, the extruder that, you, that you're using. Um, the reason for that is if there's nothing defined, then it wants to command the, the hot end to zero degrees Celsius and before the print starts it will wait for the temperature to reach zero which is never going to, to happen. So that just um, keeps or, or let the printer continue when the, the print starts and it doesn't wait for, for the temperature to reach zero. Thanks for watching and post your feedback you can post it on the website or you can post it on facebook or twitter or also on youtube